Hi there, today I want to talk about three reasons why I think that a new creator looking to get started with their very first comic project should consider starting with a smaller comic rather than a really big comic. Welcome to Ronda Art. My name's Alex, although I go by Ronda Online, and I'm an artist who's been drawing comics since I was a little kid, and who's been making web comics for the last three years. Comics are an amazing storytelling format. They combine pictures and words to tell stories in a unique way that's a little different than just using pictures or words alone. It then comes with no surprise that comics are the medium of choice for a lot of creators with which to tell their stories. But how do you even get started? Is your writing good enough? How about your art? How do you take a bunch of individual panels and put them together into a coherent page or comic strip? And how long do comics even take to make? All of these uncertainties are common things to worry about and is the reason why a lot of people have trouble getting started on their first project. Or other people like me, especially when I was younger, have no problem just diving headfirst into these big, huge comic ideas, but then quickly crash and burn when they realize that they don't have the knowledge or experience to make successful projects out of these huge things as their first comic. I was coming off another one of these crash and burns at the beginning of 2018 when I finally decided to start seeking out some more experienced creators and seeing what advice they had for relative newbies like me to help get started with their first projects. And and the one piece of advice that stood out the most to me was simply to consider starting small when you don't have a lot of experience and don't necessarily know what you're doing yet. So that's what today's video is about. Without further ado, let's get into the three reasons why I think that any new creator should at least consider starting small when getting started with their first project. So the first reason to consider starting small is that it significantly lowers the barrier to entry. For one thing, with a shorter project, there's just less on the line in general. You have more room to experiment and try things out, and even if you stumble and fall a couple times, you're not going to mess up the beginning of a great big comic. Similarly, I'll really quickly talk about how long comics take to make. Comics do often take a long time to make. Obviously, that time of completion depends on a lot of factors, like how complicated or simple your art style is, how fast and efficient you are at writing, and how long it takes to outline or script your story. If, if you've never put together a page or learned how to thumbnail before, those are things that you have to learn on the fly and can take a lot of time. And just like, so it can vary. Somebody can finish a page of a comic from anywhere from like one sitting if they have a really simple art style or don't put a lot of panels on the page or if you have a full color relatively detailed art style sometimes it can take up to like a full week of working on the comic page to actually finish it off so with that in mind you know if you take about a week for one page then it could take a little over a month to make a five page story potentially and if you start going up towards bigger and bigger page goals for that first comic, the amount of time to completion starts inflating rapidly. For example, if you have a 50 page comic, that's about 50 weeks of work, which is a little over a year. So with that in mind, Common Sense that says that starting with a shorter project just makes it easier to approach and complete. So briefly, I want to talk about how short do I mean when I say short. I guess first off, for the purpose of this video, I'm about to give a bunch of examples in terms of pages, um, but obviously these days webcomics and webtoons are a really popular form of comic as well, which are typically done in a vertical scroll format where instead of having a bunch of pages of panels put together, you kind of do one long skinny tall strip like this. So, for all intents and purposes, when I say a page, I mean roughly five panels if you're doing a vertical style comic. So for another example, if I say five pages, that's roughly equal to about 25 panels. So, for somebody who has never made a comic before in their life, um, the three kinds of page ranges that I would recommend would be something that is one page long, two to five pages long, or five to 15 pages long. And I will talk really quickly about why those are kind of the relative sizes that I would recommend. Okay, so let's start by talking about the one page comic. 
really this is the basic building block that every other kind of longer comic is built off of because you know regardless of the length of a comic it'll be however many pages or however many panels in your day-to-day -day life you might be familiar with these as like the types of comics that you might see posted to facebook or instagram for example you know those like short slice of life type comics now, similarly back in the day i don't know if there's comic common anymore but newspaper strips were also like what i would consider a one page comic but basically if you've never made a comic before just sitting down and drawing something that you can fit on one piece of paper you can grab any notebook piece of paper or a printer sheet and just make a comic on it and do that as many times as you need to feel comfortable is a solid option so the second kind of page range that i would recommend is that two to five page type of range so this will start giving people who want to do story-driven content a little bit more room to play around because two to five pages is about the amount of length that you need to tell a single scene in a longer story. This can also just be a good writing exercise in how to show and not tell so much and keep things kind of concise. So it's a good exercise just to learn how to identify the most important things you need to include to keep the story reading clearly and just stick to the basics. And lastly, the third kind of page page range that I want to talk about is something that's about 6 to 15 pages long. And once you start getting up towards that size of story, it's kind of like a short story in writing. Um, you can fit a longer, more nuanced story into that kind of page range than you can in the 2 to 5 uh, sort of page range. So for example, if you want to have a really simple beginning, middle, and end, but have a little bit more stuff going on, especially in the middle, then with a 2 to 5 uh, page comic, then a 6 to 15 page comic might be something that you're interested in. One more thing that I do want to note though is that all of these page ranges are really arbitrary. Um, I mean, I do have reasons like I just talked about why I recommend those particular ranges, but really the correct page range for you is whatever lowers the barrier of entry enough for you to just start your first project. Whether it's one page, whether it's 15 pages, or whether it's 100 pages, that's up to you. But as long as you're able to bear down and get started, then that is great. For example, I had talked about how when I started my first webcomic, Treasure Hunt, um, that that was immediately following the advice to start with something smaller. Well, Treasure Hunt ended up being a 70-page one-shot, which is way longer than any of these other um, kind of project sizes that I've talked about so far. But that was kind of the right size for me. Treasure Hunt at 70 pages was a short enough story that I was able to get over that bar barrier of entry and get started and finish my first project, so yeah. Okay, on to the next one. The second reason that I think that you should consider starting with a smaller project instead of a longer one is that you can use that small project as training wheels to learn the comic making progress before you commit a lot of your time to a longer project and allow yourself some time to grow. I touched on this earlier, but you really won't have a good sense of how comic making works and how long it'll take, what your workflow looks like, and all of those types of things until you actually spend some time making comics. And try, I mean, so you can try and guess about some of those things, you can look at how long it takes other people to do stuff and learn tips and tricks from other artists and all of that's great to do. But you can't know no for yourself until you take a swing at it. Um, by using a shorter project as sort of training wheels to get your bearings and learn how everything works, you can kind of iron out some of the kinks in your workflow, learn how to put pages together more coherently, and just all of that good stuff with a project that you don't have a lot writing on. The problem with taking those baby steps and putting the training wheels on a big project, especially if it's a passion project of yours, is that you may potentially have years and years of comic writing on how well this be humble beginning kind of performs. Another thing that's really cool about comics is that they are a great way to improve your drawing skills, your writing skills, all of your skills really quickly. They force you to do so many different kinds of poses and backgrounds and props and characters and all of that kind of stuff that as long as you like push yourself to continue improving, especially people who are newer to either writing or drawing or making comics will usually see really rapid improvement really 
really fast. Which sounds great, but that can land a lot of people into this unfortunate thing that the community calls the dreaded redo loop. So there are two main ways that the redo loop can kind of manifest itself. The first one I was super guilty of for a really long time. This relates back to the project that crashed and burned for me that I talked about earlier. Um, basically, I started working on that project in 2007 while I was in middle school, and I continued to work on it for 10 years until 2017, and I never made it past the second page of chapter 2. What would happen is I would sit down and start working on chapter 1, I'd get through 1, 2, 3, maybe 5 pages, and then... You know, I was busy, I was a student, so sometimes school or life or whatever would come up and I would put the comic down, um, keep drawing on the side and whatever, and by the time I would get back to the comic in a couple weeks or months later, I would think, ew, this looks really bad, I can do better than that now. And so, um, in my case, and what a lot, some people do, is I would just completely restart. I figured I wasn't deep enough in to try and like salvage it, so I would restart, I would go back to page one and do a new rendition. And over the course of those 10 years that I worked on this project, I probably did like at least 10 different versions of chapter one. And so I spent all those years um, mostly just making the same couple pages of the same comic a bunch of times over. I still learned a lot from going through the motions of making comics and improving my drawing during that time, but I do not have a lot of actual comic work to show from for most of my early teenage and even early 20s years, honestly, because of the redo loop. The other form that the redo loop can manifest itself in sometimes, though, is where a creator will make it farther in than I usually would. So usually I see this with people who make it like a couple chapters into their long multi-chapter story and they might look back for whatever reason and they'll think, oh gosh, I'm on chapter three now and I like how my art and paneling and pages and all that looks now, but the ones in chapter one look really bad. And so these redo loopers will instead just go back and fix a small portion of the overall comic. Say maybe they just redo chapter one so that new readers who start get the strongest first impression possible. This is definitely a little better than completely starting over because at least you don't lose all of your progress, right? But I still think that even doing that is an ideal in most scenarios and here's a few reasons why. So. One possible downside is that depending on how much of your comic you decide to redo, a lot of the time, you know, the beginning will be really good now because you've redone it with your current skill set. But wherever you decide to stop doing the redo, the quality will just plummet back down to whatever chapter two or however far you decided to stop um, was, and then slowly go back up from there, right? So, sure you have a good first impression, but I always find it really jarring when you see the quality decrease, and decrease a lot usually, really rapidly. I'm like, what the heck happened? Whereas if you start kind of low, but you see the natural progression in ability, like, that always feels more natural to me than when you see these redone beginnings, and then it's like, meh and then it continues on. So that's maybe just a gripe of mine, but I think that that's not super ideal. The second reason is that there is a non-negligible chance that your skills will improve while you do the redo. So by the time you get done with it, you may think that the part that you just redid isn't as good as it could be, or maybe you redo the redo, make a little more progress on the like back end, and then same thing happens. Oh, well now chapter one doesn't look as good as it could have, and chapter two looks really bad, so maybe I'll go back and read you both of those now, and it can be a com constant battle for quality control. So, looping this all back to starting projects, if you do one or more short projects up front, you can kind of give yourself some room to grow, because each time that you complete a short project, you will be able to take all of those skills and like experience that you got 
and apply that to the beginning of the next project. Your next project will be as strong as the end of the last project or the previous project was. And that's really significant. That means that you can start that new project with a lot more confidence because you're like, man, the start of this comic is going to kick ass because it has all of those skills and knowledge behind it. And then if you decide to do maybe another short project for your practice after the first one, then you'll get all of those skills that you can apply to the third project, and so on. Basically, by giving yourself that room to grow and experiment, you can eventually mature into a comic artist who can start a longer story, and even though you know that you will grow, like, eventually you stop growing as fast. As you learn more, and you know more, and you have more experience, it's not uncommon for the growth to mellow out a little bit. And so when you can start a series where your growth is kind of mellow, it's a lot easier to accept your early pages when they're not significantly worse than what you're doing now. So that's why training wheel projects and giving yourself room to grow, two thumbs up. Alright, and so last but not least, the third reason that I would recommend new creators consider starting out with a short project instead of a long one is due to the inherent value of completed projects and how you can get that value a lot faster and easier out of a short project than a long one. Three different benefits come to mind. One is the morale boost that you get after completing a project. Two is the experience that can only be learned via completing a project. And the third one is just how completed projects look on your creative resume and how they give you credibility as a creator. So the first one, um, the morale boost of a completed project. Man, as somebody who's completed, I guess, three comics in the last three years, um, I cannot begin to describe the feeling of accomplishment, like the dopamine rush that you get when you complete a project. Regardless of whether you've been working on it for a day, a week, a month, or a year, like when you hit upload on that final page or episode of a comic, or just even when you can finish drawing it in general, it's such a satisfying feeling. Sometimes it's bittersweet. If you're really attached to the story or characters, it can definitely be sad to say goodbye and kind of bring their story to a conclusion. But overall, just like, I've always found it very motivating and satisfying um, to reach the end of a project. Regardless of whether I finish and I'm ready to take a break or whether I finish and I'm ready to like hit the next project hard, I've been in both boats before. Um, I feel like it's an overall positive experience. The second thing is the experience that only finished projects can bring you. Um, so this is mostly just in that writing and drawing, beginnings, middles, and ends of stories are all kind of similar but unique types of storytelling to do, and just because you like have practiced beginnings a lot or middles a lot by tackling longer stories does not mean that you'll be able to nail the ending unless you've actually done some endings before. If you've ever watched a series or read a series where the show was really great up until the end and then they kind of fumbled the end and didn't really stick the landing, then you'll kind of know what I mean by this. Not that lack of experience is always the fault there, but again, the thing with long-running comics is that regardless of whether you start and drop a lot of them, or even if you just start one and stick with it but never reach the ending, overall you get a lot of experience doing starts because you're always starting a story from the beginning typically. Depending Depending on how far into your story you get, you may get a little bit or even a lot of experience doing medals. But if you've never finished a story before, you probably do not have very much experience doing those endings, regardless of whether you wrote it out. So writing a story's ending is something that you can do well ahead of drawing it out as a comic. I do admit that that's the case, but types of emotions that you want to convey in an ending, the types of shots and panels that you choose, the feelings and vibes that like go into the ending of a series are all just a little bit different than beginnings and middles you know it's not something that you can really truly get a grasp on until you've done some of them and lastly the third thing is kind of niche but it goes into your kind of creative resume and like credibility as an author basically 
if you want to like talk to somebody about you know oh yeah i make comics and go check out my stuff and they look at your like history of making comics and whether they see that you're constantly starting new projects and you can never commit to getting all the way through them you're dropping them and you're just leaving a bunch of incomplete comics in your wake that just doesn't look as good as it does to have some complete projects. Just being able to point to finished products and being like, yes, I am a creator, these are some finished things that I've made, you can go check them out if you want. And that's just a lot stronger of a way to present yourself to new potential customers or readers or if you are trying to get into webcomics as a job and want to show that you have the skills to like pull off complete stories to a potential employer, that's even more niche, but you know, stuff like this can happen and having a complete project or two or three or four or however many under your belt, generally speaking, will look better than having no completed projects. And just as a quick aside, I just want to fully acknowledge that I realize that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to comic creation. For some people, starting out with a big, long project is absolutely the right move, and, you know, if you find that you are having trouble writing short stories or you have no passion or drive to work on them, then definitely don't feel like you have to start with a short story. While I do feel comfortable recommending that advice to new creators, um, is it something that I feel passionately is a good idea? Don't feel like you have to shove yourself in that box if it's not comfortable for you. Alrighty, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Even though this was my first comic chat type video, and so it wasn't as polished or nuanced as it could have been, I hope that there was still some useful information in here for you. And I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Are you thinking about um, starting a comic soon? And if so, are you going to start with a smaller project or a long larger project? Let me know. Um, also, I stream over on twitch.tv slash RonderArt every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, so if you ever want to swing by and talk comics in real time, I'd love to chat with you. I'm always down to talk comics. And lastly, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, I'm hoping to continue publishing more of them throughout 2021 and hopefully beyond. So do uh, leave a subscribe and I will be back in a couple weeks with another video, hopefully. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!